Welcome back to Tech Tuesday. I'm Steve Leahy. All right, on the live streams here on YouTube, I had dumped a bunch of paint accidentally on a painting. One of the comments from Dusty was, it would make a good Tech Tuesday to show how I fixed that. I didn't fix it on the live stream, I fixed it after. But I'm gonna probably take one or two weeks, maybe one if I can get it done, but we might spread it out to two, on how I would fix that. So what I have here, um, I didn't want to do this on a real painting. That would have been dumb because <laughs> I don't want to make extra work for myself because I do plenty of that on my own. But what I ended up doing was I just took this piece of particle board, MDF, and I just took a little black paint and I smeared it on here. So what we're going to do is get back to this thing and I'll show you how some of the techniques that I use for fixing a painting that's already in process. Like you can't just, I mean, you can just paint over it but I try to salvage it first to make my life a little bit easier. So I'll show you some of the steps that I use to kind of get that done. So the first thing I do when I make a mistake like that, when an accident like that happens, is I just stop. More often than not, what happens is if you really wound up, if something like that happens and you just really did a bad thing on one of your paintings, you immediately jump to the whatever you can do to fix that and sometimes that makes it worse because you don't have time to think about it so the first thing i do is just stop take a break go get another cup of coffee just relax and then i come back and kind of pick my plan so the first thing to do is to try to reverse that that splotch that happens so a good way to do that is with various erasers um, you'd, i'm using acrylic base paints here so you can do this um, it'll probably work with other paints as well um, you can try each technique and see what you think but this is just the, the what what works with what I have so this is a a white uh, type eraser uh, it's made by Venus it's a 605 B but there are others like Faber Castell's 7058 this is also another good one uh, but there it's an aggressive eraser so it'll work really well so the first thing I do is I try to take the curse off what just happened and I'm not going to try to take it all off because what happens is with a painting, when you use an eraser like this, if you, it's easy to dig down not only through the damage, but also through what you did before. So to think that you can just erase it is not really what we're going for. What I'm going for is to just kind of lessen the damage, take uh, some of that paint off the top. I don't want to get all the way down to the painting underneath. I just want to kind of you know, remove what I can. Now, obviously this is not a painting, this is a board. If I dug down all the way to the bottom, I could get rid of all of it. And that's not the point. That's not what we're working at. Um, I, so again, I didn't want to ruin a real painting, but you get the idea. So I'll get it down as far as I can until I start to get down to the, the painting underneath. Now there's still a lot of black on there, but I've got, like I said, I got the curse of it off. You know, I've got most of it or a lot of it off. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to airbrush to catch up the area to to the background, to what, what else is going on in the painting. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's whatever is going on under there, I'll just pick that color. So if it's, a, if it's a light blue or yellow or whatever color it is, I'll just get a light version of that. So for this, I'm going to pick the lightest portion of this pattern, which is a, like a light tan. There's a lot of texture in this and grain, and I'm going to put that in but I want to get something that's really close to that first color. All right, so I've got some white in here. The paintbrush, I'm going to grab some brown. It's actually burnt umber, but this will work. So mix that in. And what I'm doing is now you can, there are a lot of ways to do this. You can cut a little window out of a piece of white or a piece of paper and hold it over the background and it'll isolate it and like you see it a little bit better. I'm just going to wing it for this to kind of give you a feel for the whole technique, but there are more accurate ways to color match than just by eye, um, which is what I'm doing here on the fly, but um, save a little bit of time by doing this. So I've got this nice kind of cream colored tan. This is lighter than I need it to be, but that's okay. So this becomes the eraser as well. Get this flowing a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate this color and I know it's going to be wrong because it's going to shift blue because I'm painting it on the black, but that's also okay. Clean this brush off so I don't actually have another accident. Actually, I'm getting a lot more white than cream. So what I'm doing is again, I'm just taking the curse off that, that damaged area. I'm not going to obviously do the whole thing. I'm just going to do the bottom so you can see the variation. 
and then as I get out to the edge like where the where it fades I'm gonna fade that that color out as well where the black is still really dark I'm gonna hit that a little bit harder again I'm just trying to make an even tone over the whole thing so it's not just spraying it all over you know what I mean it's not that you're, you're taking your time with it and you're kind of reversing the, the damage process so if there's a little darker area down here I'll just hit that a little bit harder and I'm just kind of building it up now that's obviously too too bright so that's okay and what I'll do is I'll get rid of a little bit of that light color and I'll just add a little bit more of a dark color so this is burnt umber that I'm using because I'm thinking that's pretty close. It's got some yellow in it, but we can make those adjustments as we go. What this whole repair is, what it boils down to, is just it relies on your ability to mix colors. You're, you're not taking the damage out. You're just painting the background again on top of it. So I added some burnt umber that feels a little bit too orangey to me, but I think that's still going to work because there's still be some blue shift to it and keep uh, you know i like to keep the colors basic too i like to mix them on the surface there are, again there are a million and one ways to uh to mix your colors so again if you kind of use that theory but then apply the way that you mix colors you know it'll fall more within your style now this is definitely a back and forth thing what I'm going to find is as I put this color in, maybe I didn't cover the, the damage enough. Like there's still black showing through. So I got to kind of play that as I go. And I'll show you what happens with that. I'm going to leave this brown set up, but there are areas I think that aren't really coming together the right way. Maybe there's still some black showing through, so I'm going to have to jump back and hit it again with a lighter color. That eraser also dug down into the surface too, which is funny because now it has a different texture than the smooth texture that was there. And that happens too, you know, it's like you're working on, well, for me, I work a lot on um, ampersand clay board and I work a lot on uh, prepared aluminum and those don't have the fiber that this does. So if I were to erase on that stuff, it, I could just erase all the way down to the board and it would still be smooth this you got to be aware of if you're working on a canvas and you somehow lift up the fiber of the canvas as you're erasing that can be a that can be an issue too so being aware of the surface is really really important and it's a lot of times you step back to oh not a lot of times all the time you know you just kind of do a little bit and then like lean back and see where you're at Make sure you're heading in the right direction. I think I've used this as much as I can um, because now what's happening is it's starting to fade more towards an orangey color, which is not really what, what's going on here. It needs a little bit of yellow ochre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave actually that set up in the cup because now as we get closer and closer to getting this fixed, uh, it's, more, it's more minor each adjustment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of... Oh, I already put it out there. That's wonderful. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add reducer and um, 4050 to this as well. So this is going to give me a real transparent color. And again, I'm using Createx, which has a, a set of mediums and reducers. Use whatever you're using. It's the same theory. So you, if you're using acrylic based paints, you're using whatever the, the clear medium is for it and then whatever reducer they recommend um, if you're using automotive paints you'd use you know an inner coat clear and the reducer but you want a real thin you want real thin paints transparent layers so that you can make minor minor adjustments so this is yellow ochre i'm going to try to reintroduce that yellow feel to this Again, I'm applying it really, really lightly and just kind of sitting back and watching the progress, making sure I'm heading in the right direction. Now, 
Now, the worst thing that can happen is a dam piece of damage like this will happen in a open area. Like if you're doing a landscape and you have this brilliant blue sky and you drop paint on it right in the middle of the blue sky, this open field. That's a hard repair. It, it's a hard repair to do what I'm doing here. In an instance like that, I would probably consider re repainting the whole area because you have this broad field that is easy to just kind of like take the curse off it, get it to this point, and then just spray the whole area blue again with a little bit of white in it to give it that opacity to cover the damage. And then you, you'd never see it. The other side of it is if it happens in a real complex area, that's actually really good because what happens is if you have a lot of other things going on here, you get it to this point and then just paint in all the other stuff, all the other details over, and then you, you probably never see it. So there's, you got to also keep in mind what's going to happen after you kind of get it fixed. You know, what's going to be on top of it, what's around it. Uh, and a lot of times you can bury that, that repair in all those details. Again, I get to a point where I start to feel that it's going a little bit too much to yellow. And, uh, and that's, that's when I stop. Now, the last step for this is going to be just that I'm not going to put in what I what I would normally do. Say that I was really trying to match this. I'm just going to save, you know, from having this be a five hour video. <laughs> um, all these little dots, these specs. I mean, you just you put in whatever's there. So you're trying to match it. I'll give you a, I'll give you a really brief view of that. So I grab a paintbrush. All the specs in here are brown and black, and I have a bunch of black on the palette here, and I have a bunch of brown on the palette, so grab some of these and then just start reintroducing these little specs. You can do this. I would do this um, midway through the repair because a lot of these specs are embedded in the actual wood. Now, again, I'm, I'm mimicking the wood itself. But I would be doing this if it was a painting too. Like if I painted a texture in on something and this this damage happened and I had to fix that, you know, area. That would be painting in the texture roughly in the same order that I originally did it. So then there'd be other layers on top and all that fun stuff. So the last thing I need to do to kind of get this to really kind of blend in is there is a kind of a grayish cast on this whole thing. So I'm going to do it really lightly, and this is really lightly, is I'm just going to start to put in this gray modeling. So the reason why I said this might go two episodes is because I never, I mean, I have a good idea Sometimes when looking at something that happened like this, I have a good idea of how quickly I can fix it. But sometimes it's, I just don't know. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, that's, you know, it's going to take a lot. So that's kind of why I mentioned at the beginning, this may be a two episode because I've never repaired anything like this before. So I honestly didn't know, but it seems to be coming together pretty quick. So in good shape now it's to that point again see i just put that little extra black on there and it's like oh i don't know if that's too much so just lean back and take a look at it and then stop and go from there so there you go all right so there is the kind of a quick and dirty repair um, again if i had stuff on top of that details then i would go and put the details back in and you'd never see it Again, if it was if it was in an area where there's nothing else going on and it's it's super hard to like if you have a field or a fade, a giant fade going across something and you get a piece of damage like this, it's for me, it's very difficult to fix that one small repair and then have it blend in with a huge fade that's going on everywhere. Uh, so in that instance, I would at this point then repaint the whole background because it doesn't take too long to do a big big area in a solid color or even a, in a you know gradual fade uh, and then you'd never see it the repair would be fixed so one final note about this whole what to do with repairs there is a point sometimes where the repair will take longer than to restart now that is a judgment call if you're in the beginning of a painting you've, you've got about an hour in and something catastrophic happens and it looks like it's going to take two hours to fix it 
it obviously makes sense to just start over. This kind of repair is more for if you're well into a painting, the repair is far less time than restarting. That's the judgment call and that's the, the call you have to make uh, as you're going. So I hope this helped. Um, I know there's a million different things that can go wrong and this only touches on a few of them, but hopefully this gets you in the good mindset to A, not panic when something like this happens and uh, B, you know, a couple of the steps in the mindset that it would take to kind of get through it. All right. So for Tech Tuesday and Steve Leahy, you guys are the best. Love you all and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot.